Warning, the following program contains graphic images of intense sports injuries that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion advised. One of the worst accidents in horse racing history occurred on August 30th, 1993. Jockey Julie Crone was riding a horse named Seattle Way. Julie was making a move down the stretch when the horse to her left suddenly veered into her path. Seattle Way stumbled, but didn't go down. Crone wasn't so lucky. Trampled and kicked around like a rag doll, Crone could have been killed. So how did this four foot 10, 100 pound woman survive getting run over by a pack of thousand pound animals? To find out, we want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. So we brought in Julie Crone. With over 3,500 victories and 81 million in earnings, she is by far the most successful female jockey in history. But that day in 1993, Crone's luck ran out. Merge with the lead. On the outside, win a lot. Bonnie is right there. Really gray zone, stumbling, going down there. A bad spill. I was in the air. I was looking back at the horses and the whole field coming at me. And I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. And it, like, kind of snapped my neck. And her back leg came down and hit my arm. My arm was, like, plastered onto the turf course. By then, I think I had already had a concussion, compressed my vertebrae in my neck, and had a compound fracture fragmentation on my ankle and a crack in my hip. I tore my cartilage in my knee. That laundry list of injuries is bad enough, but the final blow could have killed her. A kick to the chest, a blast right to her heart. How did Julie Crone survive this potentially lethal blunt force? It's very difficult to estimate the magnitude of the forces that were applied to Julie's body. Dr. Terry Smith studies impacts in sports, including horse racing. We have a horse that weighs at least 1,000 pounds that could have been traveling as fast as 45 miles an hour. Depending on where the hoof is in the gait cycle of the horse, scientists have calculated that a horse kick can generate between 2,500 and 3,500 pounds of force. We can't estimate that it's about equivalent of being struck in the chest with a sledgehammer. A 10-pound sledgehammer can simulate the force of a horse's stampeding hooves if it swung fast enough. So to simulate Julie's accident, we had to find someone who's strong enough to swing a sledgehammer as fast as a thoroughbred's leg. So we recruited NFL All-Pro linebacker, Joey Porter. Joey and the sledgehammer are playing the part of the horse. Stepping in for Julie Crone is our resident pinata, Crash. I would like to think that I can hit hard as a horse. Well, I'm confident that you can. To generate enough force to replicate a horse kick, Joey needs to get the 10-pound sledgehammer accelerating to at least 20 miles an hour. Joey's swing generated 3,200 pounds of force, as much as a thoroughbred horse kick. A concentrated blow of over one and a half tons of force to the chest could have catastrophic results. Here's an inside look into the crushing power of a horse kick. A massive impact to the chest results in a myocardial contusion or a severe bruising of the heart muscle. This in turn could cause internal bleeding, congestive heart failure, and even the rupture of the heart chamber wall. Blunt force trauma to the chest like this should be fatal. So why didn't Julie's heart explode? How did she survive this potentially devastating impact? 
Her life was saved by an item she had only recently added to her wardrobe, a flak jacket. I'd worn it for about a week, and they were just going to become mandatory. And I said, oh, I might as well just put it on. I'm one of the senior jockeys in the room. I had to set a good example for everyone. A uh, vest is designed to do several different things. One is it has to distribute the forces over as large an area as possible. And secondly, it has to absorb impact energy so that that impact energy doesn't get transmitted into Julie's body and start causing injuries. Now, to demonstrate the effectiveness of this protective gear, we're going to have Joey take another swing. But this time, the crash test dummy is outfitted with a flak jacket. So that's the exact vest that she had on when she got kicked? It's the exact same kind. OK. All right, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Sensors inside the crash test dummy reveal that the 3,200 pounds of force generated by Joey was reduced by almost 30% to only 2,000 pounds. Still a huge hit, but the flak jacket does its job. This was the key to Julie's survival. Here's how this protective gear saved Julie's life. Julie's vest weighed only two pounds but its anatomically molded high-density foam panels were able to absorb and dissipate the impact energy, spreading the 3,200 pounds of force across the entire surface area of the vest. She did sustain an impact. She did sustain an injury, but the results would have been fatal had she not been wearing this vest. This two-pound vest, worn by a 100-pound woman, absorbed over a 1,000 pounds of force. Julie's doctor made it clear there was only one reason she was still alive. If your vest went to disperse the energy, you know, your rib could have went through your heart or your heart would have just exploded from the blow. But thank goodness I had the vest on because it probably saved my life. Julie was one of the first jockeys to wear a flak jacket, and now most wear them. Not only did Julie recover, but she went on to race for another 10 years. 